The goal of this lesson is to display details about the character that was selected in the master list view. We want to display the, uh, the character's larger version of the thumbnail image, their name, a description, and then eventually we'll display in the next video all the comic books related to that particular character, at least the, the most recent comic books. Now there's also another thing that I want to address in this lesson and that is sometimes you're only going to get back a small number of, of characters that satisfy the conditions that we have here. Many of them don't have thumbnails. We might get an error whenever we're making a call into a resource across the internet. Uh, the Marvel Comics API servers could have an issue. The JSON that comes back is botched or, or isn't quite formed correctly. The, the JSON that does come back when we try to do that, that step that I'm always nervous about uh, whenever we serialize, deserialize that JSON into our object graph, that could go bad. So I need a strategy for, for recovering whenever our application simply can't get on the first try everything it needs and so we'll address that as well but let's start off with the simple stuff I'm gonna go over here to the main page .xaml, and what I want to do is flesh out the uh, the grid uh, the details grid or the grid detail the detail grid alright let me get into code mode here and what we're gonna to want to do is create some row definitions and there's going to be three uh, three distinct areas the top row will be where we display the details of the character that second row will be where we display the list of comics that character has been in recently and then finally as you click on one of those comics will display the details about a given comic in the third row okay uh, the next thing that we're going to want to do is now uh, that we have our row definitions created we're going to focus on that first row definition so we're going to create another grid inside of it so just to make sure we remember what we're doing here grid.row equals zero and uh, I'm going to make sure to set the horizontal alignment to left. These should, most of these should be defaults, but I'm just not taking any chances here. And then inside of that grid, I'm going to create one row that will display the, uh, the name and a second row that will dis uh, display the description. And then two columns, a left column that will display the image in a right column that will display the uh, the name and the description okay so a two by two two grid so row definitions and we'll just set the height on each of these to star give them equal equal width there and we'll do the same with the column definitions The first column I'm going to set to auto, and the second column width I'm going to set to star. Now all of this is subject to change. This is just where I'm starting. All right, on the left side I want the image to appear, so I'm going to set that image uh, grid dot column equals zero. But actually I want it to span both rows, so grid dot row span equals 2 and then we're going to need to uh, to populate its uh, its value programmatically so I'm going to set the name of this equal to detail image next up we're going to have the text block that will contain the name of the uh, of the character so detail name text block We're going to set the column equal to 1, so the second column. And I'm also going to make the font size a little bit larger uh, than before. So we'll set the font size at like 32. And then finally, we'll create another text block that will contain the, uh, the description, if there is one. 
And just like the thumbnail, many of the characters do not have descriptions. So that's fine. We just won't display it if there's not one. So we're going to set that in row one and grid.column one. And I'm also going to go ahead, while I'm thinking about this, and set the text wrapping because this might be a paragraph. So I'm going to set the wrapping equal to wrap. Let me put these on separate lines so they're, you can see them a little bit easier. All right, the next thing that I want to do is go back to our list view, and I want to make it so that you can actually click on one of the items. So is item cl click enabled equal true, and then uh, item click equals new event handler. I'm going to go to that new event handler using F12 on my keyboard. And what we want to do is to um, get the selected character. So the item click event args will actually give us the item that was clicked. And that will be an instance of character. Uh, it's just, unfortunately, saved as an object. So we're going to have to do a, um, a casting back to character. So var selected character equals. Then I'm going to populate the, uh, the the easy stuff. Detail name text block dot text equals the selected character dot name, and we'll do the same thing for the description. Now getting the image to display an image will be a little bit trickier. Uh, we're going to have to create a bitmap image and once we populate the bitmap images source then we can set it as the source of our XAML image control. So this is how you do it. You might even want to save this little snippet to your cheat sheet. Now the bitmap image object we're going to have to add a using statement to windows.ui.xaml.media.imaging, like so. And we're going to need to create a new URI. And we're going to give it the location by uh, giving it selected character dot thumbnail dot large. And then we're going to give it the URI kind of absolute because it's going to be a URL. All right, it doesn't like, oh, I didn't spell it correctly. There we go. All right, so large image dot URI, URI source equals URI, obviously. And now it should have everything it needs to be a real bitmap image. And so we can do this detail image dot source equals large image. That should work. Let's go ahead and try it. OK, so this is an error I run into occasionally. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what happens in this case. I believe this to be an issue with uh, the serial deserialization process. This is one of those things I seek to resolve by adding some some code uh, in the very next in the very next step and we hit this a couple of times all right but eventually we get we get data okay so now the uh, this will kind of show whether we got this right or not I'm gonna click on one of the items and you can see the image and the name the image and the name the image and the name like I said, most of these items don't have descriptions, but Pete Wisdom does have a description, which is awesome for us because now we can kind of work with uh, the spacing of things here. If you take a look, first of all, uh, I gave each of these rows equal space by giving them both star, but I think I'm just going to make this top row auto and the bottom row 
uh, star or auto, probably star. And then I'm going to add some margins around the size of this guy. And I'm actually going to push everything off about 10 pixels there. Okay. So we've got a little bit of work to do. I'll push that up or that down a little bit as well. Okay. So let's get started in here in the main page.xaml. I'm going to go to the detail image and I'm going to set its um its vertical alignment equal to top. I think that might have been the issue with that. I'm going to go to the grid. Actually, I think what I'll do is go to the entire detail grid and I'm going to add a margin there on the left-hand side. So margin 10, 0, 0, 0. Actually, I might add 10 from the right as well, just to make sure that nothing bumps up against the right there. All right. Uh, the next thing I want to do is in this inner grid, I want to set the... Uh, Row definition of the top row to auto. That should fix that issue. And then I also want to set the um, margin to the right of the text to maybe um, 10. And the same would be true then for the other text block. So now I'm going to run the application again, and I'm going to um, keep refreshing until I find a character that has a description. Okay. So I'm very happy with the result. Um, hmm, still wish that. The text was up a little bit higher. I guess it's fine the way that it is. We'll just go ahead and go with that for now. All right, but you notice that we only got three items on that particular try. And so that leads me to uh, something I wanted to talk about here, which is uh, making a call into this populate Marvel characters async. It just might not return uh, as many items as we want. So I want at least 10 items in the list, maybe more. So what I'm gonna do is add a while condition here. So um, here, let's do this again, while tab tab. And what we'll check for is the number of items inside of Marvel characters. So Marvel characters dot count. While it's less than 10 items, then we're going to continue to go through this loop. And inside of here, we're going to call await Marvel facade populate Marvel characters async. Now, the challenge here is that an async method might take a while to return. So we could be looping here a billion times while this is still trying to run the very first time. So it could be a lot of calls out to the... Uh, to that method. That's just the way that this, this works. It works as a promise and then it continues on to the next line of code. But that promise may not come back to us before we actually do an evaluation on the current count of Marvel characters. So uh, to fix this, what I want to do is make sure that populate Marvel characters async returns a task. And then we'll just check the task or we'll just wait for the task before we continue on with another uh, run of our while statement or check on the while statements condition. So let's go to the Marvel facade and take a look at what we return here. We do indeed return a task. So that's great news. Let's go back to the main page.xaml.cs and instead of using this await statement, I'm just going to say, hey, give me a task of T. Whoops. A task of T. And I'm going to need to add the task by adding a using statement to system.threading.tasks and now it should see it. Great. And then we'll just do this await t. So this will force us to wait for uh, the first call to finish before it loops back and does the conditional check, right? So um, let's go ahead and run the application. One, two, 
one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And now I'm waiting for it. It's still going. Notice that. And now we have eight, nine, ten, and a bunch more. Okay. And then there's one last thing that I want to do because this could still this could still die if um, if we're not doing this just right. So uh, let's. I want to wrap try catches around any code that's going to make a call out to a dependency that I cannot control. In this case, I can't control this call out to Marble. Uh, it, a bunch of different things could go wrong. So in that case, I'm going to wrap the try catch around this line specifically. Now, unfortunately, you can see that when I do that, uh, I'm going to um, I'm going to be out of scope with some other things here. So what I'll just do is just grab everything else just to make this easy on myself. You shouldn't have to do this always. Really, the only thing you need to wrap the try catch around is for this line. But since everything else below it depends on it, I'll just we'll just do that. So essentially what we're doing here is swallowing the exception. We're saying if there's a problem, so let's just ignore the problem and go on. Which means that we'll return t and we'll try to evaluate and say, oh, we still don't have uh, more than 10 or 10 or more items. That means we're going to try calling again. And it'll just keep trying until it can't try anymore. Maybe I should add a counter and say after 10 attempts, maybe we should just give it up. But I won't do that just yet. Okay, so let's watch as these things filter in. Okay, so we got one, two, three, four, five, and then we got more. Okay, so we can see that it made two calls because it started off with the B's and then it went on to the F's, okay? Uh, and let's just make sure that everything is still getting returned correctly. I just want to see an item that has A description. Unfortunately, none of these items have descriptions. All right. Well, that's okay. I'm pretty sure it works. So we're going to stop right here, uh, and we're going to move on, and we're going to display a list of comics for every item for every for the character that was selected. So we'll do that next. We'll see you there. Thanks.